Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to talk about the new Arch install script system. This is an easy menu system on the ISO for the brand new Arch Linux release. So the new version of Arch Linux was just dropped on May 1st. And that one is the first one shipping with the simple install menus, which takes a lot of the problems out of installing Arch. On my test here, it actually only took me about 20 to 25 minutes to install Arch Linux on a virtual box from scratch. At the end of it, we get a very uh, easy raw uh, Linux build, which is of course Arch Linux. And that build works exactly as we would expect. Now being Arch, it's not, perfectly beautifully configured it doesn't have amazing system themes for our desktop the software manager is lacking repositories there's a lot of extra stuff you need to do once you have the gui built but at the same time it does get you nothing but a raw linux uh, arch linux install out of the box and it's very easy to use i did not have to consult the documentation outside of seeing the option of how to boot the stupid thing which i literally just guessed at couldn't even find it but anyway we're going to walk through that installation i'm going to show you how to install arch from the new script and uh if you absolutely want to have a, an arch linux build this is going to be a way to go now how does this compare to other ones let's talk about that at the end of this video so we're booting this up for the first time. I have not run through this before, so uh, we're going to be experiencing this together. Uh, we have options here. We can uh, do the basic install with BIOS, BIOS with speech. We can do BIOS copy to RAM. Uh, so it's going to boot up like a Tails type thing would. We can boot the existing OS and do some extra things. We're just going to go ahead and hit the first option here. Now, as this boots up, the first big problem I see is it tells us how to access the installation guide, but doesn't actually tell us how to run the installer, which is simply calling the command arch install. And uh, what was funny is there's two separate articles on 9to5Linux talking about this particular tool, and neither of them tell you how to install it, nor is it something that is easily indicated in the installation guide. But you just type in arch install. It's going to go ahead and test the mirrors, make sure everything can work. And then it's going to give us a menu that we can use to begin testing everything out. This is as far as I got just before I decided to uh, abort it. So we didn't actually, uh, I didn't run through this before showing you guys. So we're going to start, uh, select the language. So uh, English, that's fine. If we were to hit uh, the uh, enter key, it is going to uh, go um, go back to this menu here. We'll go ahead and hit escape to go back. Keyboard layout is good. Uh, set mirror region. And let's go ahead and um, make sure that we have United States selected here. Looks like we can push up to go through. So there's that. Go ahead and hit enter. Select your hard drive. So we have uh, this guy here, and we have this guy here. These are going to be the same hard drive. Um, let's go ahead and do this one. Encryption password. We're not going to run encryption, but we can do that. We can do a bootloader. We have grub install. Looks like that might be our only option. Using swap, we have true, and you can change it to true or no. We'll go ahead and do this. Specify host name. Arch Linux is fine. Root password. And just uh, leave it blank to disable it. Password using seems to be weak. Are you sure you want to use it? Yes. One more time. It's my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. Specify a user account. We'll call it Arch. And password. Enter my super secret uh, password. Again, my super secret password that's definitely not one, two, three is... Uh, set in so now we are good and we're going to let's see add a user confirm user and exit uh, go ahead and hit enter we're going to confirm and exit so we have our user set up specify profile we have a desktop uh, we have a desktop environments. We have a minimal option, so choose to customize Arch. We have a server, or we have XORG installs a minimal system as well as XORG and graphics drivers. Go ahead and 
pick our desktop here, we have the options. Awesome, Beast Bond, Budgie, Cinnamon, Deepen, Enlightenment, Gnome, i3, KDE, LXQT, Mate, Qtile, Sway, um, or I'm sure that there's more than that. Hit the slash to search. So there you go. So if you're looking for something specifically, you can hit your slash to search for it. Um, I'll go ahead and do, let's do Budgie here. And then select a graphics driver or leave blank to install all open source drivers. Uh, let's see. So to hit blank, we're going to hit the escape button to skip it. So we're going to leave that one uh, as blank. Select the audio. We have pipe wire and we have pulse audio. So pipe wire is moving up to the default. I've not experimented with pipe wire. Let's see if it works. Select kernels, we have the basic Linux, we have a hardened Linux, an LTS, and a Zen. I'll just go ahead and keep the basic uh, Linux on there. Additional packages to install. Write additional packages, space separated. Ah, oh, interesting. So uh, if you want uh, individual packages, just go ahead and hit them here. Let's hit evolution, LibreOffice. Thunderbird. We'll go ahead and do just those. Verify that additional packages exist. Uh, LibreOffice. So either, let's see, did I spell that right? Uh, write additional packages in Spall. Um, so it's going to leave out LibreOffice. Uh, we'll have to worry about LibreOffice later. Um, I thought that was it. It might be Libre Splash Office. It might be something else. I don't know. Let's go ahead and uh, hit this. And configure network, not configured, unavailable. Copy ISO network configuration. This seems to be working, so we can do that. Network manager, so configure internet graphically and in GNOME or manual configuration. I'm going to go ahead and copy the ISO network because it seems to have worked just fine. And our time zone. Let's hit space. There oh. There it is, U.S. Eastern. That's what I want. Set automatic time sync, yes. And additional repositories to enable. So you can do multi-lib, you can do testing. I'll go ahead and leave those ones blank for now. And, ooh, disk layout is missing. Let's go up and have a look at disk layout. Select what to do with individual drive, followed by partition image. Wipe all selected drive and use best effort default partition layout. So if you want to do something manually, you can do this one. This one looks like it's more of an automatic. We'll go ahead and do that. We have uh, ButterFS, XS, XTE4, F2FS, XFS. I wonder if ZFS is in here too. Looks like it is not. Um, I'll go, go ahead and do EXT4. Everything else looks good. Hit the install. So now it is formatting, formatting, one, and my disk has been blown up. So it looks like it uh, did formatting well. It's going ahead and doing all of that, and package mirror has been enabled. And so now it appears to be installing what it needs to be installing. That's pretty cool. Man, that saved a ton of time for getting Arch installed. And of course, this is just a basic vanilla Arch. So it's downloading 500 additional megabytes. So I only downloaded 800 megabytes, like 800-ish for the package. Maybe it's close to nine. Um, and then now it's just downloading 500 more. So as far as um, your download size, it's actually worked very well. And I'm going to go ahead and let this do its thing, and then we will come on back and see how well it is working at the end. So we're nearing through the end of the installation here, and I do want to point out that it's not just the 500 megabytes it was downloading in addition to the size. It's downloading packages kind of in chunks. So here it's downloading 347 more megabytes. This is just the desktop environment things. Budgie, GNOME, uh, a few other things that were needed for the desktop environment. We did one for software packages, which was about an extra, I think, of 150, 200 megabytes. And then there's another one of basic utilities, about uh, 50 megabytes. So all in all, we are downloading about probably, I'd say about two, 
uh, three gigs or so, but that is based on the specific options that I've selected on the installer. So here it's downloading a bunch more things, and uh, we're going to go ahead and let it uh, keep downloading. So, so far we're actually only about, uh, I'd say about, uh, 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes into the installation process. Um, so that's the off camera time, about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. So would you like to see a route into the newly created installation and perform post installation configuration? Uh, let's go ahead and do no on that. And it basically says it's done. So let's go ahead and we're going to ordinarily, we might reboot it, but the, uh, Arch System's not going to kick the ISO out. Actually, let's just go ahead and just do a reboot. We can use that same screen and boot into the current OS. And if it doesn't work, we'll get back into it and uh, we'll kick the thing out. So there we are. Boot OS. So there we are. Arch Linux. We have advanced options for Arch Linux. Let's go ahead and boot into this. And if everything worked right, we should have Arch with uh, Budgie installed. So let's enter my super secret password. That's definitely not 123. And it looks like we are landing on Budgie. Let's go ahead and first let's fix the displays if we can. Display. And let's change this to 1080p. Apply. Keep this configuration. There we are. Now we are GNOME with Budgie. And let's look at the Budgie desktop settings. Looks like we don't have any uh, any of the uh, basic theming, so uh, we'll kind of have to work on installing that. Um, we'll have to look into that, and I don't remember off the top of my head how to get those installed, but it should be something that we easily find. Of course, that uh, completely made that look bad. <laughs> Can I change it to something else? Apparently not. There we are. That'll work. All right. So now we have our, uh, we have everything set up the way it should be. Uh, we basically have a simple arch build and nothing else, nothing fancy. Uh, from here, I'd need to go in and uh, I would download some extra themes for Budgie, make sure I have those in here, and I would um, make any other changes that I might want to do. Otherwise, though, it uh, looks like it worked uh, pretty well out of the box. All right. So what I can basically say here, looking at this, is um, yeah, it gives us a basic raw experience, which uh, means that uh, with Arch, we're not going to get any configuration. We're not going to get any basic system bloat. Everything's going to work kind of out of the box. This worked pretty well. Um, the only thing we need to do at this point in time is patch up any additional software that I might want to install. And um, I might also want to look at installing some extra themes and things like that. Just for fun, I'm actually going to see if uh, the themes might be available in here. No application data found. We may not actually have repositories set up for this. So it looks like it might be something else we need to do. Software repositories. There are no repositories. All right, so we'll have to go through and fix all that up. We're not going to do that on this particular video. Um, I just wanted to show how the Arch installer script worked. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll go ahead and do next steps. I'll use this for a future video, and we'll do next steps. What do you do once you have this done? So I'm not going to touch the system after we shut down the video until we get into that next steps video. And uh, that way we can get a good working Arch system out of the box, uh, particularly running Budgie. So there we are installing our Arch Linux out of the box with the brand new ISO. It's great news in that it's still only an 800 or so megabyte download. You and then everything else you're downloading is going to be based on what you options you choose inside of the system. So you have basically a way to have no bloat at all. Works out pretty well. 
Now, of course, we are going to need to go through that second video, getting everything all set up, configuring the hull, uh, all the GUI, making a good functional operating system, just making sure everything works out of the box. We're going to do that in a separate video. Now, how would I compare this to other builds of Arch Linux? Well, there are still a lot of other options out there that make um, running Arch even a little bit better. I still like Endeavor OS is what I'm using on a media PC. That comes out of the box with a lot more of the configuration configurations, you know, software repositories are already built and, and working and, and well configured. Uh, the theming works a lot better out of the box than we saw here. And in reality, it's going to be a little bit faster of an experience. But there are some extra tools in there that some people might be like, I don't want anything that's not pure Arch, nothing but Arch. That is exactly what the new script gets us. Of course, we have Garuda Linux is coming down the pipeline, which is another uh, fast moving, uh, gaining popularity. That one has a lot of bling, particularly in the dragon themes. Uh, works pretty well as well to my understanding. I have not had the best experience testing it out on the raw experience on the virtual box, but I also tested it when it was brand stinking new. So it'd be worth looking at again in the future. We also have Arco Linux, which is great as a learning experience. And of course, we have the um, ever-present Manjaro, you know, Ubuntu for the Arch World, as some people may call it, which has overall the best theming and configurations out of the box, although it does take a step back from being, quote, pure Arch. You do still have the Arch user repositories and things like that. And so uh, it, does make, uh, it does make using it a lot better, a lot more user-friendly. But if you do want the pure Arch experience, you don't want to be running Manjaro anyway. So this guy here is a great way to get a pure Arch experience without having to mess with uh, reading all the documentation verbatim and going through everything. It's It works fairly well out of the box. And we're going to do the next step video, just kind of talk about how to get it a, a good full usable system. So there's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down below. You can, uh, of course, subscribe to the Patreon channel or uh, subscribe star if you want to help support what we're doing here at Switch to Linux. With that, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.